All right, so these are some notes on section 1.5, and what we're going to be doing is building on that material that we learned in section 1.4. So as a reminder, remember when two lines have the same slope, then they're considered to be parallel, and when two lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals, they're considered to be perpendicular. So remember their products would be negative 1. So in each of these problems, what we want to do is write the equation in slope-intercept form and in standard form. So here's the difference. So it says find the equation of a line whose graph is parallel to the graph of the line y equals 3x plus 1 and passes through the point negative 2, 5. So on this problem, my slope is going to be 3 and then I have this point. So since the lines are parallel, then I know the lines have to have the same slope. So here's my work for that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line. My slope is 3. This is my point. So that means since we're talking about parallel lines, they have the same slope. So I'm going to use that equation, y minus 5 equals 3 parentheses x minus negative 2 and then I'm going to distribute that so y minus 5 equals 3x plus 6 and then add the 5 so x equals 11 I mean 3x plus 11 so that's slope intercept form remember that's in the form y equals mx plus b so then standard form is where I get the x and the y on the same side. So if I subtract that 3x over here, now I have standard form. So that's the form that we talked about, which is ax plus by equals c. Okay, so let's look at the next one. So the next one says it passes through the point negative 1, 3, and it's parallel to the line whose equation is this. Well, this is not in slope-intercept form, so in order to find the slope, I've got to put this in slope-intercept form. So here's my problem. So I've got my point is negative 1, 3. This is the equation that they gave us that's not in slope-intercept form. So I need to get it in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to move the 3x, and I'm going to move the 5. So I move the 3x by subtracting 3x and adding 5. And then I divide everything by negative 2. So I get y here, positive, uh, negative times negative, right? And then 5 divided by negative. So I end up with 3 halves x minus 5 halves. So the slope is 3 halves. So that means the parallel slope is also going to be 3 halves. So now I have what I need. I've got my slope and I've got my point. So now I can go into my equation, y minus 3, that's for my point up here, equals the slope, 3 halves, x plus 1, remember the sign changes. And then I'm going to distribute that, so I get 3 halves x plus 3 halves. And then I'm going to add the 3 over here, and you should be able to do that with a calculator. So 3 halves plus 3 is going to be 9 halves. So then I now have it in slope-intercept form. So the slope is 3 over 2, and the y-intercept is 9 halves, which is the same thing as 4.5. And then I need to get it in standard form now. So remember what we did before. To get it in standard form, I want to get rid of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So this becomes 2y, 3 halves times 2 over 1 becomes 3, and 9 halves times 2 over 1 becomes 9. So then one more step, we're going to move that 3x, negative 3x plus 2y equals 9, and that's in standard form. Okay, so let's look at the next one. So the next one says... Find the equation of the line whose graph is perpendicular to the graph of this and passes through negative 4, 1. So the slope of this line is 4 over 3. 
Well, perpendicular, remember what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the reciprocal, so it's going to be 3 fourths, and the opposite sign. So let's look at that example. So here's the equation that we started with. So the slope of that one is 4 thirds, so the slope of the perpendicular is negative 3 fourths. This is the point that we were given, so I'm going to put that in, y minus 1, negative 3 fourths, x plus 4, distribute that 3 fourths, and I get negative 3 fourths x, minus, and then if I do 3 fourths, times 4 over 1, I get 3. And then I'm going to add that 1 over to this side, so I get 2. And that is slope-intercept form. So the slope is negative 3 fourths, and the y-intercept is negative 2. And now I want to get it in standard form. So I want to get rid of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply all three terms by 4. So I get 4y. 3 fourths times 4 is negative 3x. 4 times 2 is 8, and then I'm going to move that 3x over here, so I get 3x plus 4y, and then negative 8, and there's my standard form. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Number 5, oops, I'm sorry, number 4 says find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to a line whose equation is, that's supposed to be, I have an equal 0 on there, and just got cut off and passing through the point negative 2, 3. Okay, so here we go again. So this is my equation, this is my point. In order to find the slope of this, I've got to get it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to move the x and the 12, divide everything by 3, no, sorry, by negative 3, and so the slope comes out to be one-third. So if the slope of this line is one-third, then the perpendicular slope is negative three over one. That can also be rewritten as negative three. So now using my point-slope form, y minus three equals negative three x plus two, distribute the three, and I get negative three x plus, uh, sorry, minus six, Move that 3 over here, and I get negative 3x minus 3. So in slope-intercept form, my slope is negative 3. My y-intercept is negative 3. And then to get it in standard form, I'm going to add the 3x. And so I get 3x plus y equals negative 3, and that's standard form. Okay. So the next problem is a word problem. So... In 1990, 9 million adult men in the United States lived alone. In 2008, 14.7 million adult men in the United States lived alone. So if you look at this trend, you're seeing that the number of men, adult men, that are living alone seems to be increasing over time. Um, use this information to find the slope of the linear function representing adult men living alone in the United States. And express the slope correct to two decimal places and describe what it represents, okay? So we want to find the slope. So we're setting up two ordered pairs. So 1990 and 9, and 2008 and 14.7. So doing our slope, we do 14.7 minus 9 and 2008 minus 1990, which is 5.7 over 18. And again, that doesn't mean a whole lot, so we go one more, we go out to the decimal place, and we do 0.32, and technically I could write that over 1. So what does that mean? It means 0.32 is a slope, means that 0.32 million more adult males live alone each year since 1990. So if I read this one, it would say, 5.7 million more adult males live alone every 18 years. So because of the 18. So the way I read this one is every year. So this one makes more sense. So 0.32 million more men 
live alone each year since 1990. All right, number six. Use the following data to model for the percentage of never married females ages 25 to 29. So in 2000, there were 38.9%, and in 2010, there were 47.8% of never married females ages 25 to 29. So a lot of times what we'll do when we're talking about years is instead of representing the years as 2000 and 2001 and 2002, we'll say something like y equals 0 for 1980 and it equals 10 for 1990. And you could keep saying this for, for each of them. So, uh, and this should be x, I'm sorry. x equals 0 for that and x equals 0 that. So the reason that that's important is because if you try and graph, when you're graphing, if you are trying to graph the year 2000 and the year 2010, your graph's not going to be proportional. You're going to have what happened to the year 0 and the year 1 and the year 2. So it, it, we, we tend to do it this way. So when we do this one, you'll notice that what I did is initially I wrote 2000 and 38.9 and 2010 and 47.8. So the years since 1980 is 0 is 1980, 1 is 1981, that means 10 would be 1990, 20 would be 2000, 30 would be 2010. So I'm going to rewrite those points as 20, 38.9 and 30, 47.8. And I'm going to find the slope. 47.8 minus 37, 38.9 divided by 30 minus 20. So I get 0.89. So what that's saying again is that 0.89% of never married women every year, or it's increasing by 0.89%. Okay, so part B says find the equation, okay, write the equation in slope-intercept form, okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did before, we're going to pick one of the points, I decided to use the point 20 and 38.9, and we're going to do y minus the 38.9, 0.89, x minus the 20, and then I'm going to write my equation out, I'm going to do my math, and I get this equation. So then part C says, how, um, how many women would be never married in year 2020? So that's where x is going to equal 40. So then I can put in 0.89 times 40 plus 21.1, and I get 56.7%. So in the year 2020, about 56.7% of the women would never be married between the ages of 25 and 29. Okay? All right, so the last thing that this section is talking about is what they call an average rate of change function. And we talked about the fact that we can find the average rate of change on any functions, even if they're not linear. So on this one, what we're doing is we're taking this cubic function, and we want to find the average rate of change. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the cubic function and we're going to substitute it with the point negative 2. That was one of them that was given to us. And when I substitute negative 2 into the function, I get negative 8. Then I'm going to substitute 0 into the function because that was the other point given to us, and I'm going to get 0. So then when I do my equation, I'm doing the equation with the function with x1 and the function with x2 divided by x2 minus x1. So the function with x1 is negative 8. The function with 0 is 0. And then I've got negative 2 and 0 are my values here. So I end up with negative 8 over negative 2, which is 4. And then I do it one more time with this with problem. And you can see that I get a slope of 1 over 7. So again, I plug the negative in for the function, negative 9, I'm sorry, 9, I'm sorry, in for the function, and I got 3, 
plug 16 in, I got 4 